Happy Saturday. How are you doing? How do I look? I'm up early on Saturday morning. Nobody else is up. So I got to look good for you people. Because I know you're good looking people. I want to talk to you today about 15 ways to know if you have a curse in your life. Do you have a curse in your life? Anything going on that should not be going on? You know, spirit-filled people understand curses and blessings and evil spirits. And do you know why? Because they know what God's word says. They know what's in the Bible. A lot of people don't understand this at all. These curses run wild in their lives, run wild in their families, run wild in their churches, and they have no idea what's going on. But you do. And I praise God for that. I want you to live a curse-free, blessed life. If you do, you will live an abundant life, a healthy life. Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. And the best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Great things are coming my way. Everything always works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor. The best pastor in the whole country. Because I'm available, I get incredible results. But I'm not the only one. I just read on Facebook today where one of our partners, Kathleen, prayed for somebody in a restaurant and her arm was immediately healed. And she didn't even know about it. She didn't know about it. She's had a lot going on in her life here lately. But she went into this restaurant and somebody told her, hey, you prayed for me. And I got healed right away. That's a what, and she didn't even remember. Now that is a testimony in itself because she didn't even remember praying for the woman. That's when you know God's word is working in your life. There's people in restaurants. I go into restaurants and waitresses hug me all the time because one in particular I'm thinking about, her whole life has turned around. Mary asked her one day, she says, we're going to pray for our food. Is there anything we can pray for you? Pray for you about it. And the lady just broke down. Our whole life was an absolute mess. Her whole life has straightened out. So this, people are doing the same thing that we're doing. And I'll tell you what, when that happens, you know God's word is expanding. huh? Make sure you call me today if you did your offerings and donations yesterday. Because yesterday was offering day. And make sure you call me if you need anything. And tell everybody you know, please. If anybody is sick or broke, please have them call me. If your heart hurts, call me. Heartache, emotional sickness. People go through grief and emotional sickness. If there's anything I can do or pray with you, please call me. Because... God's word is healing. God, I'm telling physical, emotional, financial, all kinds of ways. Glory to God, huh? We're working on something too. We're working on a project that's going to make a difference in a lot of people's lives. And you'll be ready in the next few months probably. Because this one, this one just went fast because this one has been in my heart for years. You know, a book has to come out of your heart. It can only come out of your heart. And, you know, I had somebody one time, one, she wanted to be my ghostwriter. And I said, I can't have a ghostwriter. I said, because what I, what I write comes out of my heart. Now, Brother Hagen didn't write his own books. But his books were taken from his sermons. Those books came out of his heart. Somebody was able to capture the essence of what was in his heart. And of course, he read through them and approved them. But they came out of his heart. A book has to come out of 
your heart. So people tell me all the time, they, they give me subjects that they want me to write about. And the one we're working on now is number 11 on Amazon. I've actually written more than that. And I don't, I, I only, I don't even start a book unless it's in my heart. And then it comes out. That's why this lady got upset with me because I wouldn't hire her as a ghostwriter. But I can't have <clears throat> my stuff come out of her heart. Amen. How to know you got a curse going on in your life. Number one, chronic sickness and disease is a sign of a curse. <clears throat> chronic financial problems. We had chronic financial problems for years. The sickness and the disease, we were able to keep down through our faith. Like a lot of people. There's a whole group of people who know how to keep financial problems down, but yet they experience a lot of sickness and disease. Those are curses. There's curses going on. And even though we were able to kick, keep the sickness and disease down, there was still curses going on because we didn't understand curses. I mean, for years I would pray for people and they get healed and I didn't understand these curses. People don't stay healed unless the curse is broke. Because the evil spirits of sickness have a right to come back. We're going to talk more about that. Chronic failure, that was me. Everything I did failed. Chronic fear, anxiety, depression, and stress. Chronic, chronic relationship difficulties. Do you have relationship difficulties? If you do, there is a curse going on, I guarantee you. Accident prone. Thoughts of suicide. Obesity. Wow. I had that one going on. Obesity. Even though I was not what you call obese, to me I was. I weighed 196 pounds. 196 and a half pounds. Now, I weigh 160. What's the difference? Mary and I broke the curse of obesity in our life. And our weight came off. Now, we did a low-carb diet. But we had never stuck to anything before. And no, no form of any kind of a diet had ever worked for us. But I'll tell you what, if you stay on low carbs, you're going to lose weight. You're, if, you, if you eat low carbs, stay away from the flour and stay away from the sugar. Now, you can have a cheat day once in a while. But stay away from that stuff for the most part. Your body weight will adjust to what it should be. My body weight should be around 160 pounds because I'm about 5'10", five, 5'11", five, maybe. Not quite six feet. I am if I stand like this. But that was a huge deal. Repeated failure. Bad habits. Anybody got bad habits? I had some bad habits in my life. One bad habit I've had was eating at night. Terrible habit. Awful. For years, I would eat peanut butter and chocolate chip cookies at night. Huh? Isn't that awful? Bad habits. Other, other people have terrible habits. Alcohol is a habit. Cigarettes, habit. These habits can be broke. They can be broke. They're curses. You got any of this going on today, you call me today. My phone should ring off the hook today if you've got any of this stuff going on in your life. You don't have to have it. Bad habit. Oh, my goodness, huh? Bad habits, including gambling. We know a professional man. Uh mental health expert. His wife has a gambling problem. She has lost, I'll bet you somewhere, probably close to a million dollars. 
of their money. And he didn't even know it because she took care of the money. It was all horrible. Horrible. Just, it's a habit. It's, it's a grip. A habit can, like, like gambling or something like that, can, can, can be a python grip and squeezes the life out of you. Oh my goodness, huh? That can be broke. I can break that in 10 seconds. And you'll never have a desire to gamble again. The guy stopped one time on his way to the casinos years ago. And I said, he just came in and sat down in my office at the car dealership. I said, what can I do for you? He said, I'm on my way to the casino. Please help me. He had no idea who I was, but God brought him in there. He had that broke and he went home to his family. I'm telling you folks, there is, and that was 30, 30 some years ago. There's so much power in the name of Jesus, in that name, that can break any of these habits. You don't have to put up with these curses in your life. Please know that. Please. Mental illness, including Alzheimer's and dementia. The power in the name of Jesus. Huh? Don't no excuses. If that's going on in your family, let's break it. I don't care what stage that person is in. There is nothing the power in the name of Jesus cannot handle. God even said to the people one time, he said, is anything too hard for God? Jesus said, all things are possible. I was at a meeting in Arkansas one night. And people came up to, to me and man was walking with his wife and he had a hold of her hand and she just, he said, she has Alzheimer's. She hasn't spoken in six months. I commanded that evil spirit to come out of her head in the name of Jesus. She turned around, spoke her husband's name and started talking to him like nothing had ever happened. He took his wife home that night in perfect health. I'm telling you, people went, people in that church went crazy. Just, it was just, it was like the euphoria in that church was just, and it was all because of the power in the name of Jesus. We give God all the glory. Mm -mm -mm. Substance abuse, alcohol, drugs, and nicotine. Nobody ever went to hell for drinking or even doing drugs or nicotine. But it sure ain't good for you. And it's very harmful. Very harmful. Ain't going to be broke. Bad temper, mood swings, and violence. I'm telling you what, that's curse. Usually a generational curse. Most of these are generational curses. Huh? Physical and mental abuse. Controlling behavior is a curse. That is the curse of rejection. If you haven't read my book on the curse of rejection, get it. It sets people free. I'm telling you what, I've been getting reports from people who have been set free from that. You call them if you got any of this going on in your life today. Let me get rid of it. Let me break those evil, awful things out of your life. Call me today also if you need prayer. Or tell everybody you know, please, who is sick and broke. Nobody needs to die of sickness and disease as long as I am here because I will use the power in the name of Jesus. The difference between me and everybody else is I'm available to help people with this. I will use the name of Jesus right over the phone to help you to get everything taken care of. That's why I'm the ultimate pastor. Make sure you call me if you did your offerings and donations yesterday or if you do them today because I want you to live a curse-free, blessed 